About a week ago, there was somewhat of a scandal regarding one of Yale schools of medicine doctors by the name of Aruna Kilinani, who pretty much said the same thing as the person that I'm about to show you will say regarding white people, though, because she had advocated for violence, unlike the hero of today's video, there was a scandal, and thankfully society has reacted to her appropriately. Now, if you wish to know more about what happened, you can watch a video done by I Hypocrite. But just for the clarity, here's a small sample. White people make my blood boil. I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, daring their body, and wiping my bloody hands as I walked away relatively gently. With a bounce on my step, like I did the world a fucking favor. Anyways, in today's video I will review the effects of critical race theory on a person by the name of Sayera Rao. The primary reason behind why I noticed her activity was her tweet. Let me read it out for you. White people, I beg you, please stop sending private messages of support and agreement, texts, DMs, emails. Private support is violent. Honestly, it is. Make it public or keep it to yourselves. This tweet, as you can guess, is not even the worst of hers, as here is a compilation of her latest tweets who just were tweeted in the past few months and she got woke a lot more earlier than just recently. What strikes me the most is just how out of touch from reality she is. But to review this one tweet from the perspective of critical academics, there's nothing really wrong here, as violence can be on many levels and is determined not by the aggressor or by the intent, but by the people who feel being aggressed towards, especially when it is done by white people. But for normal people it's uh, rather weird, yet academics as Karl Marx were ahead of the proletariat. Yet despite that she does has a regular fan base to which she preaches the truth as evident by people replying to her on Twitter. Although the definition of a normal person is changing, we can still say that her fans don't represent the majority of regular people, perhaps 20%, but not more. What's really interesting for our endeavor is to look at her tweets, and there she was, as a good race critical theorist, spending her time talking about justice and equality, which consist of mostly having issues with white people existing. White people know exactly what they're doing and what their ancestors did. Feigned ignorance is critical to white supremacy. Which white people is she talking about? Is it Joe Biden, Tom Cruise, Peggy McIntosh, Charles Murray? She did clarify it two days prior to the actual tweet that those who have attacked our government, but then also said that the ones who were marching on the streets screaming Black Lives Matter, it seems like it has no stable definition. I might be experiencing a syndrome of white fragility, so I beg your pardon, which in reality means I'm committing white violence. Perhaps I just need to listen and learn, oh, but that's just another white nonsense. Let's get to the core of it, shall we? We have a woman who is doing nothing but sharing her giant disgust and hatred of white people to whom she projects her own divide and conquer strategy. Just look at this tweet that was tweeted in the midst of black on Asian violence. Her Twitter is really a gold mine of insanity, supported by her loyal followers, one of which seems to think that her non-white experiences and existence are debated presumably by white people. The worst thing about this situation is that Twitter is not her primary place of causing division and fueling racial hatred. She happens to be running a project with her presumably only one black friend called Race to Dinner, where privileged white women are paying $2,500 for a dinner with those two freaks to learn about how racist they are. Let me quote you a small sample from The Guardian. Across from Campbell Swanson, Morgan Richards admits she recently did nothing when someone patronizingly commended her for adopting her two black children as though she had saved them. What I went through to be a mother, I didn't care if they were black, she says, opening a window for Rao to challenge her. So you admit it is stooping low to adopt a black child. And Richards accepts that the undertone of her statement is racist. Let me go ahead and quote you another passage. And what is your racism, Erica? Rao interrupts, refusing to let her off the hook. The mood becomes tense. Another woman adds, 
I don't know, Erica, but you strike me as being really in your head. Everything I'm hearing is from the neck up reminds me of white women tears, but alas, white confession could be probably the best term to describe this. The BIPOC coalition formed by those two women is exploiting the sense of guilt in those white women for the sake of money. Now frankly, I don't feel any empathy for those white lunatics either, as I would never spend so much money to be humiliated. I'm not a masochist, nor am I a white traitor, which is an appropriate academic term for those whites who are more woke than others, and not a term that I just invented on the spot. But I do have some good news over the complaints of dogma and abuse coming from those BIPOC WOM XN, the price for those lessons have significantly dropped, so if you are a leftist who is watching me, you know where to give your money, and if you don't have enough money for the lessons, don't worry whitey, you can abolish white supremacy by donating to her Patreon, and she does make a lot of money out of it. Moreover, her privileged lifestyle has started even before hating whitey became a mainstream. Being born in an Indian American family, whose average income is even higher than that of Jews, and getting those certifications before writing articles for prestigious leftist news magazines before eventually running for Congress and being defeated by another candidate despite getting endorsed by Andrew Young is a good accomplishment. Yet she is concerned about white supremacy, which in critical race theory at this point stands for anything, and that's evident by her own tweets and tweets of other race critical theorists, and that's so convenient. You can accuse white people of existing, being an evidence of white supremacy, or non-white supporting republicans as an evidence of that too. And of course, white supremacy or whiteness is killing whites uh, for some reason. Critical race theories, empirical and theoretical work are as ambiguous and vague as their definitions. And for the so-called leftist proponents of the no true Scotsman's fallacy out there, what should a correct race critical theory teach? It is so vague and unfalsifiable that it can teach precisely anything as it allows people like her operating within it and being approved by other critical race theorists and activists. What's more funny is her quote about Nancy Pelosi, accusing her of being a white feminist, which I suppose now is a leftist insult. Hmm, do you remember the times when feminism used to be a leftist thing? Anyways, a white supremacist, and therefore, if you idealized Nancy Pelosi, you may as well declare allegiance to David Duke. And frankly, if you look at it from the critical lens, both are white, both were or are in the positions of power, and white supremacy is simply when whites achieve something or are in the positions of power and therefore it should not be of a surprise to anyone that this makes a lot of sense to her. And why wouldn't it? The definition of white supremacy according to her is when white people are dominating the discourse about white supremacy in the mainstream media without acknowledging how they are upholding white supremacy in the process. And Nancy Pelosi surely likes to talk about white supremacy in the mainstream media, yet never mentions that she's a white supremacist herself. When my, I, before I was even born, my father was in the Congress of the United States, Thomas D'Alessandro Jr. He was a, okay, let's hear it for dad. <laughs> he was, as a little, boy, a little teenager, a Shabbat Goy. So he spoke Yiddish, he spoke Yiddish. So as he grew up in that, and he was a, an orator, he was a great speaker and all the rest, and he had a love for the idea of a uh, Jewish state in what was then called Palestine. And with regards to David Duke, well, there are no further comments. Sargon of Akkad had once interviewed her where he posed a few little intellectual challenges to her before she had rage quitted the debate. All the institutions seem to be ruled over by women. So... Okay. Well, well, so does this make me oppressed? Oh my god. I, I can't even answer that. I mean, seriously, what it's like literally what you said is like, I have a I have a woman friend, so I'm not sexist. We had a black president, so so America is is post race. I mean, it doesn't even. I think you saying it's more complicated um, is problematic. Right. And I think right. the fact that we can't even agree on the fundamental hmm. of racial genocide 
and the enslavement of Africans. You said that you, you and I you and I disagree on the founding of the United States. No, no, no. I, I, I think, like I said, I agree that there was definitely in in later stages a racial genocide, without a doubt, right? But I don't think it was initially conceived that racial way. Racial genocide, enslavement of black people, Chinese exclusionary okay, act. Okay, hang on. Let's let's go let's go one at a time because like I agree with you, the enslavement of black people, but that's not to say that black people weren't also complicit. And that's like that's my point. Black I, people were complicit in their own enslavement. Some of them were, yeah. That is crazy. I'm not. I, I actually well, I can't. Hang even on, hang that. on. Let I, me explain. Let me explain. Sargon had probably meant to say that black slave traders were selling other blacks to white slave traders and merchants in exchange for money, but maybe thought it was too edgy to say, so he never made the point. Frankly, I'm not sure she knows of it, because our institutions are occupied by people like her, teaching history from a critical perspective. The reason I have made this video is to show you that she is not an individual, but a part of a collective ideology which is currently being defended by most of our institutions, who claim to stand against racism and intolerance. Yet what they are teaching is precisely that, diluted with the most insane conspiracy theories and resentment towards whitey. If you are a white leftist or a liberal and are in support of the critical race theory, what is happening is part Partially due to your own silence and complicity in the process. And although you may say how anti-racist or not racist you are, or how much you don't care about race, or how you hate those evil conservatives, to those people you're not really different from yours truly. At this point, if you care for minimizing damage and the liberal notion of justice, you should be on my side and perhaps read some literature on why things have gotten to where they are. But alas, this is the end of today's video, thank you as always for spending your time here and hearing me out.